Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's focus for Wednesday, December the 21st, 2022 at 1218 p.m. Central Time. Today's focus, salvation from what? Salvation from what? Today's focus is based on Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Let me read it. Very powerful words. You should memorize this. You should write this down everywhere. And you should, and this is very important. Matthew 1, 21 is not to be just memorized during Christmas time. If you are honest with yourself, if you'll truly see yourself as you truly are, if you will, if you will truly see yourself as you really are, you will understand you need Matthew 121 every day of the year. Here we go. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Here we go. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he, speaking of Jesus, shall save his people from their sins. Matthew 1, 21, and she shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, there's a lot of very important theological issues contained in that verse. And maybe we will talk about it more in this week. Maybe we'll talk about it more today. But for today's focus, remember, I want to give you one thing to focus on. And when I read Matthew 1 21, especially in light of Christianity in 2022 and where Christianity is headed in 2023, it makes me ask this question, save us from what? Now, I know the text tells us, right? The text tells us there shouldn't even be an issue in the church. But for some reason, we have forgotten these words that he will save his people from their sins. But somehow, within the evangelical world, we've taken Jesus, the one who saves his people from their sins, and turned Jesus into a savior who saves people from everything other than their sins. Let me explain. For some in the evangelical church, Jesus is not his is no longer the savior to save people from their sins. He is now the savior that saves people from their loneliness, their depression, their discouragement, their their frustration, their anger, their bitterness. That Jesus now is has become a savior saving people from everything other than their sin. He's almost become a therapeutic savior. He's almost become like, like a, a counselor to, to counsel us and save us from all of our emotional hangups and for all, all of our frustrations and all of the irritations in life. And that happens. And now it's subtle because yes, the church will still talk about Jesus saving us from our sins, but you can immediately see where the focus is. He's saving you from this and 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 from this. And you sometimes want to go, well, what happened to him being a savior from, from our sins? What happened to that? This is an ongoing problem, but there's another problem. In the church. Another thing the church does that I have really been talking about recently. Okay, so there's the, and I think the idea of turning Jesus almost into a therapeutic savior to save us from our problems, I think that's been talked about a lot. I think that's been talked about a lot in uh, the past. And, and, I, and I know people have addressed it. But I think that there's another issue that may be overlooked. And, and I really want us to consider this one. Some people have turned Jesus into a savior that saves us, not from our sins, but from our inability. What do I mean by that? If you listen to some churches, this is what Jesus really came to do. He said, you're a sinner. You've broken the law. You have failed. You have fallen short over and over and over and over again. But I've got good news for you. 
I have come to save you from that inability. I have come to give you the ability to keep the law. I've come to save you so that you can do right. But I believe, first of all, that is a complete misunderstanding of the gospel. The gospel didn't come to make sinful people now have the ability to be good. He came to save sinful people who lacked the ability to be good and save them even though they would never be good because he saved them not on any action that they could or would do. He saved them by an imputed righteousness. By an imputed righteousness. That means, hey, you're never, think of it this way. Jesus came to save the people who will never pass the test, who will never get a hundred on the test, who will never even get a 60 on the test. He saved the people who will continue to sin day and night and thought, word, and deed. That's why he saved them by paying for their sins. And then his obedience and his righteousness is imputed to them by faith. We've turned, the good news of the gospel isn't, hey, you're a sinner, Jesus died for you, and you're now clothed in his perfect righteousness. The good news is, well, yeah, yeah, that's true. Jesus did die for you. He did give you a righteousness, but but, but that, that's not the focus. The good news is now you can do it. You, according to this mentality in the evangelical church, you can now keep the law. You can now obey. So see, Jesus, he, you were a bad person. He's now made you a good person practically. You can do it. Now, the only problem with that supposed salvation message is the reality is, We can't do it. The reality is we continue to sin. And many of those who preach this kind of, I I will refer to it as a fraudulent gospel, even they, when, when push comes to shove, will admit, well, I mean, you're right. We can't do it perfectly. Okay, well then, if I can't do it perfectly, I can't then tell people Jesus came to give me the power to do it if you're already telling me the power is limited and it won't get me to perfection. And if it won't get me to perfection, that means I'm I'm in a perpetual state of sin because the law doesn't demand 50% effort. It demands 100% perfection. So we've got to be very careful that we don't preach Jesus as a therapeutic savior to save people from all of their emotional hangups and all of their issues. We, we, this happens a lot of times in, sh- in church camps, right? Hey, you find young people who are dealing with a hundred emotions, right? They're lonely. They, they lack self-confidence. They, they don't know. There's so many emotions. And then you manipulate those emotions. You get them, you, you tell sad stories, you do this, you do this. And then guess what you do? You present Jesus as a savior to those emotional issues. No, he came to save his people from their sins. That's what he came to do. And then on the other hand, the church sits there and tells everyone, no, no, no. See what Jesus really came to do is to save you from your inability by infusing in you an ability. So now that you can keep the law, you can now do it. Well, the problem is anyone who's halfway honest with themselves are going to find themselves in a, in a pit of despair and discouragement because they're going to be, you know what I did? I mean, just, just stop and look at 2022. How much sin was in your life in 2022? Oh, you may try to give yourself some pat on the back that it was less than before, but what? Did, how do you measure more or less when it comes to sin? If you break one point of the law, you're guilty of the whole thing. So you were in sin in 2022. You were in sin. You were sin in your thoughts. You were sin in your, you were in sin in your words. You were in, uh, in sin in your actions and what you did and didn't do. You were sin in your desires. You were in sin in your motivations. 2022 was a year of sin for you. So what is your hope? Christ came to save his people from their sins. How did he save them? Not by giving you the ability ability now to supposedly stop sinning. He saved you knowing that you will never have the ability to stop sinning. You're always going to sin. He saved you by an imputed righteousness. And for some weird reason, the imputed righteousness of Christ has been discarded because people think salvation is now not being given an imputed righteousness, but being given a practical righteousness. And by doing this, we have destroyed the gospel of Jesus Christ.
They called his name Jesus because he was going to save his people from their sins. Reject the therapeutic Jesus. Reject the Jesus that just came to give you an ability and embrace the Jesus who came to save sinners. And those sinners, well, they're very close because, well, just look in the mirror. Those sinners are you and those sinners are me. Those sinners are everyone around us because we all sin. Jesus died to pay for it. And then by faith, his righteousness is imputed to me. That doesn't, that just, that just declares me to be righteous, even though I am not. Those are powerful words. And I fear that we've, that we're losing them. Now, I know some will say something along these lines, and I have some issues with this, but they'll say, Jesus not only came to save us from the penalty of sin, he came to save us from the power of sin. And what they mean by that is that now we're, we now have, we're no longer under the power of sin. We, that power has been broken, and now we possess the ability to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The only problem with that is we claim that and then immediately say, well, well, but wait a minute, wait a minute. He saved us from the power of sin. However, we're still going to sin. However, we're not going to be perfect. Well, if I, if I can't be perfect, then I'm still under the power of sin. If the power of sin has been completely broken, as people claim, in a practical way. Now, in my position, the power of sin is completely broken. I, so I believe I have been saved from the power of sin in my position, but in practice, Christians have to consider what they actually say. If you say, he has saved me from the power of sin, he has saved me from the bondage of sin in a practical way, if I claim that, I can't turn around and say, however, you can't be perfect. Because if I can't be perfect, then clearly I'm still under the power of that which keeps me from being perfect. Meaning, I still have a sinful nature, and I still sin, and I always will sin. Because that is the reality of it. Jesus came to save me from my sins. He came to save his people from their sins. Now, we could get very much into a discussion there about Israel, which would be very, and get into a lot of uh, issues related to eschatology and in the book of Romans that all of Israel will be saved. And then how do you define Israel? I know there's so many th theological issues here. I understand that. But I just want you to really just today focus on the fact that Mary brought forth a son and called his name Jesus. And it wasn't an accident. There was a very specific reason because Jesus saved his people from their sins, that he will save his people from their sins. Not from all of our emotional problems and not simply saving us by giving us an ability to do something. He saved us by an imputed righteousness, and he died for our sins. Spend some time thinking about that. I would love to get your thoughts on anything I just said today. Email me, newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. I always love to get your thoughts and, well, your perspective on the things we share here for today's focus. But today's focus for this Wednesday, December the 21st, 2022, it's Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 and he shall call and he and she shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins.